In 2022, we started planning a move from Baltimore, Maryland to Amelia Island, Florida. Initially, we sailed blown away down the length of the Chesapeake Bay to get her close to the start of the Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway. By fall of 2023, we were living on Amelia Island and Blown Away was more than 600 miles away in Hampton, Virginia. It was November of 2023 when we started to seriously plan a trip down the Atlantic ICW. We went from knowing nothing about traveling the ICW to pinning down the when, the where, and the how, and then actually untying the lines and doing the trip. A lot of people disrupted their lives to make this trip possible. I'll introduce them to you in a minute. The first decision was when. What month to do the trip? You can travel the ICW pretty much any time of the year, but weather will be the difference between a pleasant experience and a challenging one. August, September, and October are peak hurricane months. June and July could be pretty hot for anchoring out, and they are also at the start of hurricane season. Be aware, too, that as temperatures rise, insects hatch out. No seams are biting midges that can get quite thick in the warmer days of late spring, making travel on the ICW less enjoyable. October and November are peak southward migration months for the snowbirds. This means lots of traffic on the ICW. higher fuel prices, and competition to get a slip at a marina. On the other side, April and May are the peak northbound migration months, bringing all the same problems. Many people make the trip in December, January, or February. But it can be quite cold anchoring out, and you may have to deal with ice in northern sections. For us, March or early April was the sweet spot. Picking March as our travel month meant waking up at anchor some mornings with the inside temperature in the 30s. It was sometimes a test of wheels to see who would get up first to light the stove and get the kettle going. March travel also meant dense clouds of pollen that coated everything in yellow. But most days were clear and warmish, and we only traveled in the rain once. March travel meant that we only encountered a few northbound boats and only one southbound boat during the entire three weeks. Marina slips were easy to get on a moment's notice, until late March when we started to hear, sorry, we are booked up until next week. A sailboat will average about five knots on the ICW, so you can plan on covering about 57 miles in a 10-hour day. If we pressed hard, we could have covered 750 miles from Hampton, Virginia to Amelia Island, Florida in 13 days. But Stacy prefers a much slower pace, and it seemed wise to budget in a few extra days for weather or mechanical delays. Also, Stacy didn't feel good about asking someone else to take care of our animals for more than 10 days. Our final plan called for Stacy to get us to mile marker zero and then crew for the first 200 miles, which would take us to Oriental, North Carolina. My friend Ron would do the next 400 miles over nine days to get us to Savannah, Georgia. And then my daughter Rachel would do the last 140 miles over four days. But the only way Ron could get free was if his sister Rose could fly out from Dallas to look after their aging parents in South Florida. Hi, I'm Rose. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've known Stacy and David. It feels like my whole wonderful portion of my life. And how did you get involved in this whole endeavor to move the boat to Florida? Well, you know, uh, my brother has sailed all his life and when David got his boat at that point I was thinking it would be so cool if my brother and David could meet. So finally last year uh, over, Chris over the Christmas holidays uh, we all were able to have a lunch together and Ron and David got to know each other and it looked like it might be a good fit. So when David had to move his boat uh, and Ron was already living in Florida I came down for a, a vacation to sit with my folks and, and make sure that the home 
front was being held down and Ron and David got to move the boat and do some really incredible things while they were doing it. <laughs> so back to the animals. A friend, Heidi, volunteered to travel from Loveland, Colorado to take care of Poe and Callie while Stacy crewed the first leg. Hi, I'm Heidi from Loveland, Colorado. Why did you travel to Amelia Island, Florida? Because I love my friends and I love their pets and I am looking forward to, in a support role way, supporting them on their great adventure. I'll be taking care of two, like my almost my two favorite dogs in the world and a, a cat who's decided that she likes me. Okay, Saturday, March 9th, on the road from Amelia Island. After months of planning, departure day finally arrived. The first leg was driving to Hampton, Virginia in a rented car packed tight with gear and non-perishable provisions. Oh, so here we are, 10, ten hours later. Arrived at in Hampton Salt Ponds Resort Marina. Stacy already took one uh, cartful. That's our rental Jeep Wrangler. It was fine. Ten hour, ten hour drive though. Now it's time to unload. Ah, so here we are <laughs> unloading. No, we got more. My son helped us return the rental car and then stopped by the boat with his family. After unloading in the dark, we spent the night on the boat, but we weren't sure if we would untie the lines in the morning or not. The forecast called for the wind to build to 25 knots, with gusts over 30 by early afternoon. It had been more than six months since either of us had sailed. I remember being pretty anxious that night as we laid in the rebirth listening to the wind howl. We were up with the sun the next morning. It was cold and windy, but safe to make the 15-mile journey from Salt Ponds Marina in Hampton, Virginia to Tidewater Marina in Portsmouth, Virginia at mile marker zero of the Atlantic ICW. Okay, leaving Salt Ponds Marina Resort. Not a resort at all, but it is a marina. Yeah, help me see buoys. And when you come back, you can put the bumpers up. It's gorgeous. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you see the green too? Yeah, I see the green too. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to just split it up right up the middle. 13.5. Well, you have to do this to get to the deep water. You can see the Navy ship, uh, the shipyard over there, I think. Is that where we're going? Yeah. Okay. And then we'll turn. Yeah, and then we'll turn right. Turn west. Hello, I am prepping these lines for arrival. There's 
Tidewater Marina. And there's the hospital center. I think this is an anchorage right here. Yep, there's a boat anchored. Do you know how to get in? And that's more folk over there. I guess there's a ferry that goes across. Yeah, we're headed right to it. I just, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to want us to be. So is that us there, huh? Oh yeah, it's it's not easy. All right, <laughs> this may be a second try. Well, we have, once we get that, we're good. Um, we can prop walk the rest of it. Are you up for getting this guy? <laughs> Ready? There we go. Yeah, it doesn't matter though. We could, yeah, it's easy to, after the front's attached. Yeah. Okay, thank you. On our first day in Portsmouth, our daughter-in-law, Lauren, drove us all over town to fill up the propane tanks and get all the perishables we would need for a week. <sighs> oh, here we are. Here we are. We're starting the ICW, filling up the water tanks. Filling up the water tanks. Yay. Yep. It is a very blustery day. Gale warnings. There's, I think that's the Naval Medical Center. Stacy's doing that. I am uh, getting ready to do the fuel filters. There's the primary separation filter, and then on the engine will be that secondary filter and the oil. By the third day, the gale force winds had subsided and the sun started shining. All the birds are gone. Oh uh, yeah, they are all gone, aren't they? What a beautiful place this was, framed in the sparkling waters of the Elizabeth River. As we sat on the deck of the boat that evening, Stacy said, let's untie the lines tomorrow. We fell asleep that night, safely tied up at mile marker zero. We could only imagine the adventures that awaited us on our way to mile marker 720.